the $23 billion sale price was just too much to say no to. I mean, it was 46 times, you mentioned it's 46 times the $500 million in annual recurring revenue it currently generates. And a favorite stock of mine, which we've discussed on this podcast before and which I personally own and which is one of the highest performers in Horizon Folio and in our foundations folio and is is uh, CrowdStrike. And even though it's richly valued, it's only 25 times annual recurring revenue. So like Wiz is at 46 times annual recurring revenue. <laughs> Hi hey there, and welcome to Stock Club, a podcast brought to you by My Wall Street. Before we get into it, a word from our sponsors at Vodafone Ireland and their new cloud-based unifi- unified communications product, Vodafone UC. This is a technology that integrates various communication and collaboration tools into a single system. These tools typically include voice, video conferencing, instant messaging, email, and file sharing. All the good stuff. Uh, basically everything we use in business. Uh, they've partnered with Ring Central to roll out Vodafone UC for organizations of all sizes in Ireland. This is great for business. It's already available in countries like Italy, Spain, Portugal, Germany, and the UK. And this solution allows businesses to facilitate seamless communication and collaboration for virtually any device, anywhere, at any time. With this offering, Vodafone Business Ireland and Ring Central are helping businesses adapt to the evolving landscape of hybrid work. <laughs> Emmett, how are we getting at? How are you, Mike? What's the story? Not much now. Uh, how's the form of two? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, the Irish summer's creeping across uh, our landscape as we speak. Yeah, it's not been too bad. Um, I have yeah. to tell you, I've become a convert. I've never become a convert to something so fast as I have with this yoke. It's called, have you ever heard of a Shakti mat? No, no idea what that is. So it's... it's acupressure not acupuncture so basically yeah, the same right. I'm afraid of that yeah the same elements of acupuncture except it doesn't actually kind of break the skin i guess yeah it's basically a yoga mat and it's got all these tiny little spikes on it have you ever seen one of those before it's like dimples and their various uh, depth is that right yeah so i the best explanation i could come from it looks like you know the spikes you'd have on the bottom of a golf shoe sticking up right yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Revolutionary. <laughs> but hold on, you stand on it, No, it? you lie on it. And like, it's oh. it's like getting a deep tissue massage or something. Like I'd always get like tight neck and tight back and stuff. And I've been doing this for the last week for about, I don't know, 20 minutes maybe a day. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm Well, sales will be so made. Uh, all- recommendation yeah well you know what i'm gonna buy one because you know everyone who does any kind of sports eventually ends up hurting their back and i've been walking around holding the small my back for three weeks after a a specific tennis injury but yeah i'm gonna buy one of those so where did you get it uh i just bought it online it's called shakti match is one of them but there's a bunch you can buy them on i'd say you could go into any easton's or easton's elveries or decathlon or whichever else they'd have them right Great. People are going to think this is a paid for promotion. I know so this is wasted. <laughs> this is our this is our trial to get sponsored. I think <laughs> I think I'm just going to approach them because I've been recommending it to absolutely everybody. It's unbelievable. Well, I'm going to buy one. Yeah. I'm going to buy one today because I actually need something. So there you go. Yeah. Great recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, now now that we have our second ad read of the day done, we may as well start the show. <laughs> um, so the big story uh, came out from the Wall Street Journal this week from Google. It's basically advanced talks to acquire Wiz, cybersecurity company, uh, for $23 billion. It would be Google's biggest acquisition by far. It's only founded back in 2020 as well. But obviously, a company worth $23 billion in four years is growing rapidly. It was looking at an IPO when it, it was at last valued around $12 billion back in May. Uh, the, Google is, the, the deal will be Google's best biggest ever acquisition and it'll properly put them into the cybersecurity mix they obviously bought mandiant back in 2022 was it yeah yeah for five billion so this is a real line in the sand where google sees where the puck is going and wants to be involved so uh emmet set the scene for what's happening here and actually before you do do you remember where you first heard heard of wiz from it was probably you on this podcast, was it? No, it was Shane Kern at our Horizon Members event. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Do you not remember that? Right. We gave oh, him, I should have guessed. We, we uh, asked him to name three cybersecurity stocks and he says, I'm going to name one private company and it's Wiz. So that was very... Um, oh, I see. Yeah. And yeah, that was nearly a year ago. So actually, well done, Shane. But like Shane is the wonder kid of Ireland and cybersecurity. So I suppose if he hadn't heard of it, nobody would have. But hats off to him. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, big time. Okay, so set the scene. What's happening with Google and Wiz? Yeah, well, I think as most of us, uh, or most of us look at Google and they see it as the de facto search engine provider of everyday maps, uh, owner of YouTube, Fitbit, and a few other things that generally on day to day you just can't remember. But um, this is an acquisition machine. Like Google is a giant trundling steamroller of. Oh, yeah. I mean, earlier this year they were in talk to acquire HubSpot. Yeah. Uh, for client. I mean, that's the type of thing they do. I mean, when you look at HubSpot, an independently listed business that in its own right is magnificent and is a purveyor of all things to do with the web, it was a nice fit, but they really do acquisitions. Mm. In fact, there's a Wikipedia page, Mike, dedicated to Google acquisitions yeah. that as of this morning has 500, sorry, 258 uh, acquisitions with the most recent being a, a business called Cameo, which is a virtual app delivery company which they acquired just there in june so yeah. they're always acquiring and i think uh the magnitude of the one we're discussing here is the reason it's newsworthy so the list as of this morning uh, according to wikipedia only has three cyber security firms and as we all know cyber security is one of the most important areas in all of commerce in all of business uh, for development and for dominance, especially if you're Google. And Wiz offers this enterprise facing cloud security platform with real time threat detection and responses powered by, you guessed it, AI. So the, sh the short answer to your question is that it's a cloud cybersecurity company founded by a group of ex Israeli military guys that in four years, as you already said, has gone from a concept to a value of $23 billion. And it would be the largest exit for any tech start startup since Rivian in, in uh, 2021. It was sold for $77 billion back in, uh, oh, no, 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 they IPO'd in November 2021. Um, but this is definitely one of the biggest we've seen in a very long time, which makes it newsworthy. By the way, Mike, each of the founders own about 9% of the business, which means they could walk away with about $2 billion each. It's not bad for uh, four years of work, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. Now, they, they, in fairness, they know each other 20 years. Uh, they worked in the Israeli Defense Forces Cyber Intelligence Division, uh, which is called the Unit uh, 8200, a unit so secret, Mike, that I don't even know I can say the name. Uh, but these the veterans of this unit, 8200 or 8200, I don't know how they refer to it internally, have found uh, have founded loads of cybersecurity companies. Like Israel is an epicenter of excellence for a lot of things, but especially for cybersecurity. And former veterans from that unit have founded Palo Alto Networks, uh, Fireblocks, Checkpoint, which has been around for forever. So really, this is like the ultimate university for cybersecurity. And these uh, four guys have gone and done something that is pretty exceptional, really. Mm. And so what makes it such an exceptional company? Because 23 billion for a private company, I think it's, is it something around mm. 50 or 60 times revenue, current revenue, maybe yeah. 30 times yeah. uh, next year's revenue? So. Why, why does it yeah. have such a big price tag and why is Google paying so much over, over the odds? Well, you're dead right, first and foremost, like their annual recurring revenue is insane. It was $100 million after just 18 months and it went to $350 million in 2023, at which time it, attracted, it was attracting the who's who of venture capital. I mean, when you have that super normal growth in such a short period of time, anyone who invests at the, in the venture scene will want to be on your cap table. Um, so they specifically attracted Index Ventures, uh, Sequoia Capital, and Green Oaks, which are the three three of the biggest brands in, in venture capital in the world. So firstly, getting fresh capital to grow like crazy was not a challenge. And growing like crazy is very doable in a global land grab for cybersecurity firms when they have good products. Um, and clearly Wiz does. And every business out there 
every single business has in some way migrated their data and their applications from local servers and data centers up to up to the cloud. It's just been a 10-year movement. Actually, it's probably been a 20-year movement, but it's just hyper-concentrated in the last couple of years. Um, and Wiz's first customers were Barclays Bank and Mars, uh, the, the makers of chocolate bars, which generally makes it easier to land other big names. And they certainly did land other big names. And according to that Wall Street Journal article that you mentioned at the top of the piece, uh, Morgan Stanley and Slack followed suit. And 40% of the Fortune 500 companies are now customers of Wiz. Um, so in May, just gone, uh, Wiz raised a billion dollars on a valuation of 12 billion. And it was intended to use this big pile of cash to do exactly what Google has done. And that's go out and acquire startups and accelerate growth. But a few weeks later, Google sent a man with a briefcase, uh, specifically a guy called Thomas uh, Curian, yeah. who's the CEO of the, the the iCloud business and from what I can do from to do some where I sit on the balcony of ignorance the 23 billion dollar sale price was just too much to say no to I mean it was 46 times you mentioned this 46 times the 500 million dollar in annual recurring revenue it currently generates and a favorite stock of mine which we've discussed on this podcast before and which I personally own and which is one of the highest performers in Horizon Folio and in our foundations folio and is is uh, CrowdStrike. And even though it's richly valued, it's only 25 times annual recurring revenue. So like Wiz is at 46 times annual recurring revenue. So your question was, what is it they do? You know, what is it that makes them special? Why do they command such a premium? And again, to my non-buyer's eye, as in I've never conducted an RFI tendering process or whatever it's called. I've never been a CIO who knows the latest and greatest nuances of all these different businesses. Um, really, what they do is cloud security, posture management, visibility and monitoring, risk assessment, threat detection, response, compliance management. I mean, it's a shopping list, automated remediation, integration with other security tools. It, it kind of sounds like it does everything you would want your ultimate security guard to do uh, in the world of cybersecurity. But what it, why does it do it differently to, to CrowdStrike? Uh, I just don't know. Hmm. I mean, I looked at this, as, as I've said before on the podcast, when I, I had a look at their, their product suite and I was like a chicken looking into a welly. There was just nothing. It was just <laughs> a shopping list of things, you know, like this. Oh, yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. Oh, what else do they do? Oh, they do um, a cloud infrastructure for application monitoring. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I need that. What else? Honestly, I think if you were to actually understand what makes them better or superior or give them an edge over the other big names, you need to be in a buyer's shoes and know a specific problem that you have or a threat that you're very worried about. And then you'd see their solution and compare it to the others. But they they are now one of the kingpins in the area of cybersecurity. Yeah. And, and Google is obviously looking at that in terms of its Google, Google Cloud revenue. And it goes a bit unnoticed because it's behind AWS and Microsoft Azure, but mm -hmm. it's still accounting for something crazy like i think it's about 20 percent of revenue it's it's still an absolute behemoth and if you're bringing yeah. in the cloud security the cloud security expert like wiz which is a platform within itself i say it's looking for synergies there it's already maybe buying up wiz's customer list and being like oh if we integrate integrate this with google cloud it's a really easy step forward to bring them in as customers there as well so yeah. that's where I would see the synergies. But again, you're talking about 50 times sales. It, 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 it's a big premium. Google has Huge. the money. Huge. And the one thing, and we're going to get into this a bit later as well, is that the one thing Google does really, really well is acquisitions. Now, yeah, that's right. none of them have been this expensive. Maybe in more mm. recent years, whether, you know, Sergey Brin and Harry Page aren't there anymore. The vision isn't as clear or if there just hasn't been as good enough targets, but mm. it's going to have question marks around it just because of the price tag. And the reality is, I think that the reality is like businesses are more expensive now than when you could go out and buy a YouTube for a billion quid in 2006, yeah. 2007. But I think you nailed the point there. It kind of smacks of a deal that they just had to do. 
I can imagine if you're sitting in Google and as you said, you're looking at Microsoft's Azure product and all these other competitors, and you are one of the defining brands of the internet, you they just had to make the deal work. So the multiple of the AOR annual recurring revenue, I think is we're like we can intellectualize it and go, well, that's you know nearly double what the, the price tag is for, for CrowdStrike, but that's not the valuation Matt's going on there. I would imagine what's going on is the team was sent acquire that business at any cost. So it's been reduced to a number for us and we look and get our pencils out and go, yeah, but you just Google said we have to have what they have. We can't not we can't not acquire this or at least can't not try. Yeah. I think this is the first time anyone's ever made CrowdStock look at even a little bit cheap. But um, bit cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's true. Uh okay, so it's just an announcement that they intend to buy. Is the deal set in stone? Yeah. Well, no. Um and not, certainly not at the time of recording. And after us doing last week's yeah. show about Jeez, Elon. I should have opened up the podcast with that. I think it was about oh. two hours after the podcast was published. Yeah. Elon Musk yeah. announced that he's pushing back the uh, announcement we were talking about for about 10 minutes. Honestly. Honestly. So as you and I are speaking in this millisecond, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the deal is not set in stone. Now, if it is, if it does complete, Mike, it's going to draw scrutiny, of course, from antitrust regulators on both side, sides of the Atlantic um, who have cracked down on acquisition efforts by tech giants in recent years. Like, for example, uh, there was Microsoft's, I think it was $70 billion acquisition of uh, Activision, which we discussed here. NVIDIA's 40 billion bid for ARM. Visa's five, five and a half billion dollar purchase of Plaid. Um, and in some cases, uh, there was lots of I suppose, media Ferrari about the reduced competition and market dominance. So these kind of acquisitions do get media attention because a brand that independently sits out there is just subsumed into a bigger brand. Like last December, Adobe called off its planned $20 billion acquisition of the collaboration software startup Figma um, after two companies just couldn't see a way to get through uh, the, the the hurdles and the nets that were being put up in front of them in Europe. And Google is already facing t- at least two lawsuits from the Justice Department over its dominance in search and alleged unfair practices in its ad tech business. Um, so the Wall Street Journal reported Google and Waze are in advanced sale talks. And Senator Richard Blumenthal wrote on Sunday on the social media platform X, it seems like this deal would be one of the antitrust textbooks, how to enrage enforcers and elude law and logic in pursuing monopoly power. It deserves exacting scrutiny and some skepticism. So already the noise has begun. So the deal is not set in stone. If I was a betting person, I'd say... Yeah, I think it probably will get through because it's so aligned what Google, Google does. And if they can demonstrate they can't do it to uh, effectively deliver what it is they do, I think it will eventually circumvent all the laws. But it's a giant deal and there's no doubt about it. Yeah, I think it would depend on the bundling as well. So if Wiz is the market leader in cloud security, you want Wiz's products, you have to not you have to use Google Cloud, but it's very advantageous yeah. to use Google Cloud. And then this acquisition disadvantages those little minnows like Microsoft and Amazon. So there's yeah. something along those lines. But again, as I, as I like but, to repeat um, every three weeks, I'm not an antitrust expert by any means. Mike, I'd love to know what the top 10 acquisitions actually were. Yeah, so this is where we get into now. <laughs> um, basically... You sent me this and we're like, we'll talk about this on the podcast. And I was thinking about a podcast I listened to all the way back during COVID from Acquired FM. And obviously this mm. list is very unscientific. It's just a podcast, basically, no more than what we're doing now. But they went through what they saw as the 10 best acquisitions of all time. And it's a really interesting list and Google is all over it, which is what inspired me, I think, because Google, when you zoom out, was built by acquisitions, which is strange to think about because, you know, you see the images of Larry Page and Sergey Brin in their basement building the link, Mm. you know, the backlink attributable search engine or whatever it is. But everything else around Google as a business was 
kind of brought in through acquisitions. So as a bit of a spoiler, um, a lot of Google is all over this list of 10, but I thought it'd be fun to run through it. You're going to be able to guess a few. You're not going to be able to guess some of them. And yeah, mm. we can just discuss because it is just, it's an interesting, like it almost recent stock market history lesson. So I have two clarifying questions. Well, one's a question, one's an observation. <laughs> the observation is, is there actually a podcast dedicated to acquisitions? Uh, Acquired FM, it's good. Yeah, it's acquisitions in general, stock market stuff. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so they're a rival now. I don't like those. And then um, the, is it the 10 biggest Google acquisitions or the 10 biggest acquisitions full stop? 10 biggest acquisitions full stop. But I think oh, nice. four of them are from Google and not biggest oh, acquisitions, yeah, but like guess. most profitable ones, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Let's do it. So, uh, do I, what, how are we going to do this? I'm Am just, just going to be thrown into a guessing game. Yeah. I'm not going to put you on the spot for some of them. Okay. But because you're not going to, can I have a shot? Let me have a go. Can I hit you with one or two? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. So and our listeners are going to go, hold on. He sent it to him. Yeah. I didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not read it. Uh, he, well, I, I, obviously YouTube, we discussed that. Is that one of the top 10? Yeah. So YouTube is number. Number three, bought for one point six five really? billion in two thousand and six. Um, right. Yeah. Obviously. Okay. Well, if it's on the list, that helps me because I can remember at least two that were done that were bigger. Uh, Fitbit was bigger than YouTube. I remember. No, no, no. So it's here. not. It's not in terms of how much they paid. It's in terms of the money they've made from. Ah. It. You know what I mean? Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Nest is that is that a good one? Who Nest? Google bought Nest. Right, that answers that. Nest is the in, the thermostats for your home. Oh, but sure, how are they making more money from Nest than they are from YouTube? <laughs> <You've> got, <laughs> because they're you've got fifteen thousand euro each. You've got, no money. I don't you've know. You've got this I, all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. I'm just stupid. Okay. Um, hold on. Um, that's my list done. Okay. So let's you go. Choose. I'll go from the top and I'll give you I'll give you parameters and you can see if you can All guess. Right, okay. Let's go. Let's All right. So it. number 10. People now know I didn't They're like, wow, he wasn't just saying that. This guy is stupid. Uh number 10 was a purchase uh of 4.2 billion by Disney back yeah. in 2009. Ah, uh, 2000. That was either um that was either either Marvel or Pixar. So I'm gonna say that was 09 uh i think that was i think that was marvel yeah that was great actually i'm so, i'm impressed i wouldn't have got that. well i know because i was a shareholder of marvel and marvel was one of the best investments i ever made in my life now it's just been subsumed and became disney shares but i bought marvel shares for about three bucks a pop when it was just the uh or sorry we're talking pixar is it no no marvel pixar. marvel you're right the first time what is marvel uh yeah i did i bought my uh, marvel for about three bucks a pop it was super uncool it was just before they'd released the, 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 the first um revitalization of the marvel brand as far as i recall was toby Maguire's spider-man movie and the business was really struggling and stanley the founder of marvel was also personally struggling and it was a brand that was dear to my heart through nostalgia there's barely anyone in my age who doesn't have a soft spot in their heart for uh, Spider-Man. So yeah, that's why I know that one because I was invested and I did very well by it. Yeah, big time. And I don't know if Marvel would be on this list if it was made now. Do you know the the hype around mm. superhero movies has subsided quite a bit? But it's Well, they've sweated the asset. They yes. did what you know, they, they really delivered the cow so dry like. Yeah. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. But even Seems on that, it's made it's made 30 billion in revenue from box office alone. And then if you think about the content wow. makes up basically half of Disney Plus, which is over 100 million people at around $7 a month. Do you know, a lot yeah, of the modern yeah. day Disney we see has been completely powered by Marvel in terms of not the parks mm. and the entertainment side of things, but in terms of content and streaming and box office. So much of it yeah. is... It's Marvel, and then a lot of the other the rest of it is Pixar as well. But it it is still yeah. a beast. I don't know, right? If uh, we'd put it too high now, just because we're post kind of that Avengers superhero hype a bit, 
it seems like people's mm. tastes have kind of matured somewhat but yeah definitely it's definitely worth a lot more than 4.2 billion now that's for sure and the generational value of that brand i always think of grand theft auto for uh, take two um rockstar games and how grand theft auto will just deliver revenue in multiples of what they paid forever and the marvel franchise will do the same like we're all a little bit tired of it now and whether it's avengers or spider-man or whoever else is the latest like we need a break the general public need a break but i'm telling you in 10 years from now if they decide right we're going to do the new wave of marvel heroes it's going to be as profitable as relevant there's always going to be young people who love that stuff and i think it's a wonderful acquisition i think it's a great brand and um uh yeah glad i made the top 10. yeah what's next okay this one i, I think it's impossible to guess because it's like three acquisitions at once basically oh but uh right. from 2004 by google for 70 million what industry it's one of their one of their big apps android no that's further down uh they bought they bought three companies uh, that that kind of amalgamated into google maps uh where to keyhole Ooh. and zip dash so i did not know that so yeah google maps was kind of built on these three acquisitions um, right. but researching this i could not get over guess how much money google maps made into 2023 well, we, it, it, they make their money by, as far as I know, their biggest money was made in a deal with Apple. And it's an absolute absurd amount of cash, the deal they signed with Apple. So I'm going to guess 15 trillion. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Nearly. Uh, 11 billion. What is it? Google Maps what? makes 11 billion a year. Like I was just doing very back in the napkin, Max. And I say, if you stick Google's own price to sales multiple on that, which is about eight. That's a ninety billion dollar business in Google what? Maps alone. Oh, hold on a minute now. That's basically, we all use Google that's Maps. Basically an Airbnb. Like, and I don't pay for that. An Airbnb oh, that they have goodness. just as a nice to have for Google, aside from everything else. That's... <laughs> Show now Airbnb in the corner there. But we can't do an Airbnb boss. It's already been done. A, a maps business. Put it in there and make it as big as Airbnb. But what um like so am I right? Is it from basically licensing their maps to players such as Apple and everybody else? Uh, and then they have a big advertising business on it as well. So really? I don't think I've ever seen an ad on it. Or maybe really? I see it every like, day and I don't realize. Do you never put in kind of if you're in a new, if you're on holidays and you just type yeah. in restaurants, you'll get ads yeah. at the top of the list. It's just another search engine, basically, uh, very specific oh, for I probably do. locations. I'm blind to ads these days. Okay, that is that is interesting because it really has played out nice. I didn't even recognize the three names you just listed. No, either did I. Don't even ring a bell. Yeah. Okay, right. number eight, uh, another tough yeah. one because it's all the way back in 1984. Uh it was purchased by ABC, which is now owned by 84. Disney, uh, for 188 right. million in 1984. Oh, okay. Think of it. Think of Disney's current assets. Okay, is it is it the Sesame Street <laughs> workshop? <laughs> no. Close enough. Close enough. Yes. Was it Kermit the Frog? ESPN. Uh, is it okay? Close. ESPN. All right. Okay. Yeah. So ABC. Was it ESPN? Just they have it that long. ABC, which is now owned by Disney, claimed that ESPN compounded at fifteen percent for thirty-five years in a row. That's absolutely oh nuts. So that is unbelievable. Yeah, and you see it now. Do you remember? Uh, it was only recently because yeah. we thought Disney would put ESPN up for sale. Do you remember they kind of itemized mm, their revenue yeah. and their earnings, and they yes. uh, yeah. published what they were making? So in the la in the first two quarters of this year, uh, ESPN mm -hmm. brought in nine billion quid. So. Oh, come on. Not a bad, not a bad return for 188 million, nice. is it? Mike, we should acquire something. Well, we go ahead and acquire something. <laughs> if you have 188 million lying <laughs> around, I wouldn't bother. I just, yeah. I'd pack it in. But, uh, okay. Yeah. This next one, right. this next one you're going to get, right. I hope. Okay. Hit me. Uh, okay. I hope so. eBay bought this company for 1.5 billion in 2002. It would later. PayPal. PayPal. Okay. You didn't even need the hint. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, this is a very interesting one because the acquired company, so eBay later would spin it off uh, in 2015 and PayPal would go on to grow about at one point at its peak, about 10 times the size of eBay. I think yeah, at its pandemic yeah. peak, it grew to about 300 billion. 
which was up yeah. ninefold in the six years from when eBay spun it off. It's obviously come back yeah. down to earth a lot since. I think it's about eighty yeah. percent from its peak. But yeah, PayPal was mm. an absolute beast, and it was. And I remember the the management team were just they yeah, didn't want to be working say. for eBay. And oh, sorry, yeah, well, PayPal the, mafia. Uh, the PayPal mafia were just, I don't want to work for eBay. It's not cool enough. Let's do it on our own. And off they went. Yeah. And and like, that's what brought about so much companies we have now. Elon Musk came from that Mm. group of people. Peter Mm. Thiel. uh, Yeah. Not Reed Hastman's. I always get this mixed up. Reed Hoffman from LinkedIn. So Reed Hoffman. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of money made from that 1.5 billion since is crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like that funded Facebook, that funded Tesla, that funded uh spacex that funded linkedin yeah so yeah. it is that this is probably one of the more interesting stories just because of what came from it and if it it's a fascinating story if it wasn't it's amazing if it wasn't acquired mm. we would have probably seen a lot less innovation because those people would have been tied up within that company instead of being given two three hundred million to go off and do what they do what they did since yeah. It's absolutely stunning. I, I think it was Fortune magazine or Forbes did a, a, a really well-renowned cover where all of these billionaires you mentioned and the other ones who are slightly less well-known uh, were on the cover in a very cool stylized photo that they all got together for. And it is a powerhouse of innovation as in individuals who innovated. Yeah, It's just an incredible story. Who would have thought PayPal would, would spin what we, I mean, we all engage with something that was ultimately a spin-off from PayPal. Mm, it's funny how eBay is kind of the source for so much of, so much of, well, obviously PayPal that they missed out on a lot, but also so much of Silicon Valley's kind of seed funding, Amazing. if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, number yeah. six. I think you might be able to get this one. Uh, this company was bought by Priceline in 2005 for $135 million. <sighs> Was it booking.com? Booking.com. Very good. I'm impressed by your knowledge here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't? Uh, Okay. I'm happy I got that, to be honest, because for a minute I was like, I'm not sure what Priceline does. So it just (laughs) was in there in the back of my mind. But Priceline is now called booking.com, in fairness. If if the acquisition didn't go well. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if I was a shareholder. It just kind of I wouldn't have pulled that out of the back <laughs> of my mind unless I had an interest. <laughs> uh so yeah, it went so far as they basically changed their name from Priceline to Booking.com in 2018. Ah, but yeah. that company is now worth uh 140 billion. If you bought shares of wow. Priceline at the time of the booking acquisition, you would now be sitting yeah. on a hundred and seventy-four bagger. So Oh, I I know I I'm that's it. Well, then I must have bought them. <laughs> <laughs> bought them, bought them, and that's sold them like, a year later for a nice yeah. double. Right. Well, that that answers that. And what year was that? That was two thousand five. Right. Oh five. There you go. So what we're talking about nearly 20, 20 years ago, nineteen years ago. Yeah. Right. That okay. makes me feel a bit better. Go on. Anyway, next. This one <laughs> could be the most interesting one on the list because of what came after it. Uh, so yeah, talk to me. What is it? Apple bought Next Software for four hundred twenty-nine million dollars in nineteen ninety-seven. What was special about this acquisition? Well, I mean, according to the Steve Jobs autobiography, that was the birth of uh, uh, the iMac, wasn't it, or, well, or iOS, one or the other? It was basically they bought Steve Jobs back. So Next Software oh, was right. Steve Jobs' company after he left back Apple and went off and did his own thing. Oh, right, In acquiring right, it, they right. essentially brought him back into the fold. And, you know, the rest is history, basically. So you could put, like, yeah. the iOS, iMac, all of that behind it. But in theory, it's kind of just this was the return of Steve Jobs. And I assume got a Can I have a half a point because I mentioned Steve Jobs? I think, the I think first you'll get you'll get a half a point. You're you're doing pretty well though. What are you on? One, <laughs> two. Yeah, three and a half out of five is pretty good. Uh mm. okay. Next one, you've already mentioned it. Google bought it for fifty million in two thousand five. <laughs> you can't even remember <laughs> I already mentioned ten minutes ago. Uh oh uh, hell was it uh well it wasn't Nest. <laughs> Thank you. Uh was it Fitbit? No, 2005, Android. 
you mentioned it the first guess. Oh, that old thing. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, come on. I, you got to give me that point. I got it earlier on. Uh, that was, I don't yeah, know. That, well, that's I more contention. Outside of this segment. Yeah, but okay, they bought okay. it for 50 million all the way back in 2005. Okay, Another one here. How much does Google make in revenue from Play Store in 2023? Oh, um, well, you've given me something to anchor on with the maps preposterous figures yeah. so I'm, uh from the play store 20, 20 billion 34 really yeah wow so android was bought for 50 million the play store now makes about 93 million a day so ah come on it's it's crazy when you just look at what google has done in the past through acquisitions and obviously they've done so much more on top of it since but, yeah. but the seeds that they sow from these buys is unreal. And next one is yeah. number three. We've already talked about it. YouTube, 1.65 billion in 2006. Uh, the third of four from Google, which is just unreal. Largest stream in the world. Makes about 32 billion in revenue uh, last year. So pretty much there beside Play Store. Um, contributes about 10% of total revenue for the business. It's actually the second largest search engine in the world behind Google is itself as well, which I thought was interesting. Just an absolute beast. YouTube. Yeah. Are well, you tell me if I go and I'm going to figure out Fermat's last theorem, I go to YouTube. Some people yeah, do, not. apparently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose, you know, um, I had to change the battery in my, my, uh, my car's key the other day, straight to YouTube, tech god that I am. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to find out how to do this with the internet. I had to I, it I had to search how to use my Shakti Mat. I went straight to YouTube as well, you know? <laughs> no free ads. Hold on a minute. You are being paid to plug this product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought what was um, really interesting about this. I went back and read a few uh, old articles from the time the acquisition happened. Uh, yeah. So NBC described it as described YouTube as a still unprofitable startup. They mentioned that cynics question YouTube's staying power, while also comparing it to Napster, which famously died under copyright infringements. In the same article, they got a quote from Sergey Brin. It oh, said, yeah. "It's hard to imagine a better fit with another company. This really reminds me of Google just a, sh a few short years ago." It was so interesting oh, to wow. see the juxtaposition of short-term commentary we'll say versus long-term mm -hmm. vision there side by side yeah yeah oh it's amazing like i think the world is kind of surprised at how how youtube didn't really get a disruptor like we all saw youtube as the first mover early advantage it was the that place where you uploaded your videos on the internet and at the time when when google bought it i thought for now until the next thing comes along and sure we've seen uh TikTok as as a challenger but the brand that youtube has now the dominance it has the how many trillions of hours or minutes of video it has is just unbelievable so yeah hats off to them okay give me a clue for number two before we want to move uh, before we move on to number two listen to this gem so this was in one of the articles i was reading uh from 2006 when i was talking about the youtube acquisition Google's YouTube coup may intensify the pressure on Yahoo to make its own splash by buying Facebook.com, the internet's second most popular social networking site. Really? Yahoo has reportedly offered as much as $1 billion for Palo Alto-based Facebook during months. Oh, my talks. goodness. Wow. I wonder if that was during Marissa Mayer's time. She was the CEO of Yahoo. I mean, we could have a, a very interesting conversation about that particular tenure, but I'd avoid it because it seemed it would sound like we're out to assassinate someone. But honestly, there were so many missteps yeah. during that time. To think Yahoo was as big a brand as Google, whereas now it's just for stock nerds like you and me. It's not, it's not. like as far as I, it's it's just unreal. Yeah, yeah. and then eighty year old people that still have the same email address that they did twenty five years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. This is the last uh, Google acquisition in at number two from two thousand and seven. This probably under the radar a bit um think of what we haven't mentioned about youtube yet so we got and this is this is all in the space of three four years where they bought basically bought maps through the course of three acquisitions bought android bought youtube and bought this company has it been mentioned in passing since we started this recording no it, and it's it's kind of it's less of its own brand than the rest of them it might be a tough one to figure out 
Does it have hardware? As in, did they make hardware? No, software. Mm. Uh, and what year was it? 2007. Okay, give us a, one more clue because honestly, the muses are not seeing. <laughs> it's basically, it powers its ad exchange now. Is it ITA? No, double click. Oh yeah, double click. Yeah, so. Right. Jeez, I never would have thought, I swear to God, you could have left me here guessing <laughs> for the next three hours for the world's most boring podcast, even more boring than Acquired FM, folks. And uh, we, and I still wouldn't have, I still wouldn't have thought of that one, double click. Yeah, and it's interesting because it's hard to attribute maybe the value double click gave to Google more so than Android or YouTube, where there's very clear figures. But in terms of monetization of the platforms it's mm. built, Double click mm. really, really is the engine behind it all. You know, it powers Google's ad exchange. And yeah. without, yeah. <clears throat> obviously, YouTube, Google Maps, Google Search, Gmail, they would all work well, but Google wouldn't be able to extract the money it could without double click. So it probably does deserve to be up here. Do you know what I mean? Google makes something like $240 billion a year from, from ads. So yeah, that's. Uh, it's a very interesting one. I think. It, I think it. I was when I first saw the list. I was like, "Oh, does that deserve to be number two? But then, when you kind of drill down into it, it, it could, like it is their that's their revenue center. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And I, I had forgotten, or at least I didn't even know that double click was the the core of the core of what Google does. I'm a bit. I'm feeling a bit stressed now because if the biggest in the world, I have to get this one. You should get this one. 2012. Okay, Purchased by Facebook mm -hmm. for one billion quid. Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Ah, I never would have thought that's number one. Well, yeah, the most recent acquisition on this list. And I don't know, I, I it made sense to me in my head, but maybe because it's such a mm. brand, such an obvious brand. But you know, in twelve years it bought it Instagram didn't make any money when YouTube uh, when Facebook bought it. But Zuckerberg, Facebook were getting a bit of stick for missing the boat on MOBA. And uh, yeah, Zuckerberg yeah. kind of recognized Instagram is there. Uh, it's crazy story about when it bought it. So it bought it, Google, uh, Facebook's IPO was in May of 2012. The acquisition for Instagram happened in April of 2012. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Isn't it? And like... So risky, if you think about it. This happened a month before an IPO, which is bizarre enough. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. Zuckerberg was just like, oh, no, we need to buy a mobile component. And we'll do oh, it yeah, right it's now. Oh, yeah, it all feels very familiar. I remember at the time, and um, uh, it, it seemed, it's funny, with retrospect, all these things make perfect sense. Because yes, we've seen that's how very it plays fair. out. And we're very, we're like, we, we can sit um, in judgment of something that a person or a business did in the past and identify whether it was a good or bad decision. And you don't really realize how many biases are, are abundant in your mind at that time. Because you're like, well, obviously it made sense to buy YouTube, but obviously at that time it wasn't that clear. And even today, when we look at decisions being made by business leaders that we discussed today, whether it's full self-driving with Elon or whether it's uh, uh, Zuckerberg's big bet on the metaverse, which has, I know, gone down a little bit, demoted in the conversation because no one has done it before. You're left uh, in the current moment thinking, well, I don't know, that doesn't sound great. But then in a few years, well, obviously they had to do that. That was that was a no-brainer. And you have to be very careful of that particular bias. Yeah, big time. I just think, and obviously it helps when you own basically 80 or 90% of the voting shares. But for a CEO to make a decision, at a time like that, right before an IPO, when all the eyes in the world are watching you and you're buying an unprofitable business for a billion quid, very mm. impressive. And, I was, and you're talking about hindsight is twenty twenty, and in retrospect, everything looks good, but it yeah, got to be one of the better business decisions anyone's ever made. Uh, this conversation has put me in the mood of buying a business. <laughs> like, I really, I really go 
do it. Yeah. And everyone's going to go, what's that maniac at? And then in five years, they'll be like, obviously, that was the right thing to do. But uh, I thought it was a fun exercise. It's a good list, obviously. I really enjoyed that. That was really good. Let's do it every day. Um, <laughs> obviously, there are <laughs> omissions, you know. You could look at any of Warren Buffett's buys, mm. but an awful lot of them weren't company to company acquisitions if that makes sense you know he would buy. yeah that's right they weren't there to operationalize they were there you know they're there to, to just profit keep like, going. And like, they invested in coke at whenever or they invested in bank yeah. of america and they invested in apple at the right time but it wasn't so much we seize candy overtake. get an honorable mention seize, seize candy was one that could uh could have made the list for sure um yeah yeah but uh but yeah it, it was a good one i think we could do something similar maybe with Warren Buffett's Best Buys or something like that, which is a oh, bit yeah, different. That would be but, fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'll turn the spotlight in your direction, put you under the heat lamp for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have we time? Have we time to talk about a sneak peek? This has been a long and enjoyable conversation. According to my statistical tool in the top left hand corner, we've been talking for 45 minutes. Yeah. Can we give it another two minutes, Mike. I do, I do. I have a quick one. Um, we'll get rid of it and then we'll call it a day. So this week's sneak peek is sneak peek is going into ne- Nexus today. You'll be hearing this yeah. on Thursday. So it's going into the service today. So if you're a Nexus subscriber, check your email. Uh, you've got a doozy in there. This is a market leader in a nascent retail technology. It's set to grow at a CAGR of 18% over the next 10 years. The industry is forecast to grow from 1.4 billion currently to 7.5 billion by 2020, 2034. And this company controls about half the market at the minute. And these contracts that it has, it's going to move into half of Walmart stores by 2026. So things are definitely looking up. If you want to hear more about the stock and the technology itself as well, because I hadn't heard about it before researching this business, uh, it's very new and it's only really gaining traction in America only recently. You'll see it in certain European countries. I've been in France for a bit. You'll see it. It's very common there. So yeah, good one. If you want to learn more, it's on Nexus in the next couple of hours. Uh, you can find everything you need to in the show notes for this episode. So that's a sneak peek. Love it, Mike. I remember asking you when we started to research this particular business, how was your customer experience when you used it? And you looked at me as if I too had to like, <laughs> I don't have a customer experience using this tech. It just exists. And I'm like, okay, good feedback. Back. good feedback yeah <laughs> it's it's not interesting by any means but it is an interesting business if that makes sense you're not going to be yeah, very excited it's not going to be ai robots cleaning your house yeah just making stinking piles of cash and <laughs> to grow bigger all right uh i think that's it for today's show that was a fun one emma thank you for joining me and thank you everyone for listening in as well uh, remember, before we head out, to, if you want to hear more about the launch of Vodafone Business UC with Ring Central, Ring Central for organizations of all sizes in Ireland, just click on the link in the show notes. Or if you want to hear more from Nexus and see what sneak peek we were talking about there, you can sign up at mywallstreet.com or just go to the link in the show notes and you'll find everything you need. Uh, thanks for joining us today and we'll talk to you next week.